Hi guys, Ruth here from Beltane Gifts. Welcome once again to the Crafting Shares and we are back in the shop, which is scarily as cold as the garage. I had hoped it would be warmer, but hey, I'm wearing a jumper and a cardigan today, so I should be nice and snug. Today, because it's so cold and we're on the run-up to Christmas, I thought I'd continue showing you how to needle felt some of my felted friends. And today's is going to be this little guy, uh, which is the snowman. So this has got a lot more techniques involved in it, so thought I'd show you how to do some new things. Uh, down here I have got my other camera and it shows you some of the things I'm going to be using today. So I'm also going to be using, which I haven't used before, some of this flat felt. This is just plain acrylic flat felt. So please excuse my breathing. <sighs> Sound like I've been running. Um, just very unfit. Okay, so I've got some different bits of flat felt that I've already cut out and we're going to be using these to add details. So we've got a long red piece which is going to be the scarf. We've got a black piece that I've cut into a circle that's going to be the brim of the hat. Um, you don't need to use these if you don't want to, it's completely up to you. We've got some little black beads, I think these are about 2mm. We've got finger protectors because we don't enjoy stabbing ourselves. Um, Mm, felting needle yes got a fine felting needle this is actually one of my gauged ones this is a 36 uh, gauge star needle just trying to remember that so the difference with the star needles is they have a little bit of a groove um, in between which just gives it a bigger surface area for stabbing at least I think that's what this is no just a 36 mil uh, 36 gauge <laughs> Now with your gauge needles, I don't often use them because you can do it without, but I found these ones whilst I was tidying and thought I would use it. Um, the gauge needles, the higher the gauge, the higher the gauge number, the finer the needle. And the finer the needle, the smaller the holes you lead, um, you need. You, you leave. <laughs> oh God, it feels like a Monday. It's Thursday, but it feels like a Monday. Okay, so with the gauge needles, the higher the number, the finer the needle, so the smaller the hole you need behind. Um, I just quite like using the 36s. Yep, also got needle and thread. I've got my uh, trusty giant scissors. And I have got the main piece of roving, which is the white roving, or in this case, it's kind of an off white, it's a natural, natural white. So um, it hasn't been bleached or anything, it's just this is the colour it is after it's been washed off the sheep. And I've also got this piece of orange fibre here. Now, it looks different because I've actually wetted this one down with some water and added just a touch of washing up liquid to it. Uh, normally I would do this by the sink but that wouldn't mean moving the cameras again and I'm lazy. So um, what I've done is I've damped it down, I've added the washing up liquid and what this does is we're going to be doing a little bit of wet felting just to get the nose for the snowman just because we're working with such small amounts of fibre that it gets really fiddly and um, the chance of you stabbing yourself really get bigger the smaller the amount of fibre. So I thought we'll wet felt this. I'm going to do this first because it's damp at the minute and I want it to dry ready for adding it. So what I've done is I've just got my piece of fibre, just normal roving, added, normally you'd use hot water and the reason you'd use the hot water and the washing up liquid is because it opens up the scales on the fibre and when you rub the fibres together then those scales they interlock it's a bit like velcro so the more you rub and agitate it the closer the fibers get and the more they interlock it's the same process that we get from needle felting where you stab it to interlock those fibers so i'm just going to shift everything to the side oh you might notice the beads are on a piece of um, acrylic felt and that's just to stop them rolling away so let's pop everything out of the way for a minute that's where the fiber was so we're just going to pull it apart and just make it really messy. Normally I'd do this before I, I damped it down. There we go. And then we're just going to rub it really gently to start off with between our fingers. And it's like when you're rolling clay. Um, but we start really, really gently. And then as it starts to join together, you just increase your pressure. And the reason you do this is because if you you did it too strongly to begin with you'd end up with lots of ridges although I'm probably going to end up with those anyway so pull it apart a bit I'm just going to roll it because what we want to do is create a carrot so it's going to be kind of like this but 
even smaller. So I'm just going to keep going. We're not going to use the whole thing. What we're probably going to do is use the pointy end um, and then just cut off the rest. So I'm just rubbing it between my fingers and I'm increasing the pressure now just because it's starting to join together. You can see the shape starting to form there. So I'm just going to keep going and go right to the point because you want to make sure it's really felted there and just keep going. Okay, so I think that's probably going to do. I'm just going to, once she thinks it's, uh, it's done, just do it a little bit more. There we go. Now what I'd normally do is put this on a radiator or something, but I don't have that because it's very, very cold in here and I'm too cheap to put on the radiator. Well, I'd have to find it first. So instead, I'm just going to put that in my pocket. So uh, hopefully the body heat will dry it by the end of this, um, this section. Okay, so we've got our white roving here. I've got quite a lot here. Um, probably only going to use a bit. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. I'm using a section here, probably about six grams worth, but you can vary this. Now normally what I would do is I get you to mess it all up and I get you to turn it into a ball and then we'd shape it from the ball. Today we're just going to do it just quick and dirty. So I'm just going to rotate this and roll it up on itself. There we go. Now this way is a very messy way to felt and we're not going to be able to get the details we want. Um, okay we're not going to do it this way then. Okay. <laughs> now normally I get you to take all your fibre and mess it all up and turn it into a ball. Today we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're not going to mess it up first. We're in fact just going to keep rolling it round itself and then felt it. So I'm going to start with the head and work my way down. Put my finger protectors on first. If you have got a felting pad at home, you can have that below and work on your felting pad. Um, I have got one, but I'd have to reach all the way over there. I can't be bothered. So I'm going to do it between finger and thumb, just to take it really carefully. So we've rolled the fibre around here. And what I'm going to do is where the edges meet, I'm just going to stab those to start off with. And what this should do is stop it from unrolling. So just give it a general stab. It's getting very noisy in the corridor, so if I have to disappear in a minute, please excuse me. Okay, so that's starting to come together. I'm just going to keep going over it until it's more of a ball shape. So same technique as you'd normally use for making a felted ball, um, just stabbing it from all the different angles. The only difference here is I've already wrapped the fibres quite closely together, which is why I'm using a finer needle. If you've already done the, the tight wrapping, um, the fibres will be too close together to use a bigger needle. Just go straight to your finer needle and you can hear from the... Let me just put the microphone a bit closer. You can hear from the stabbing sound that that's connecting with the fibres and starting to felt together. Now this is going to have kind of lines and things, it's going to be a little bit messier than our normal way but it is going to be a lot quicker so if you are going to make quite a few of these for Christmas and people aren't going to get too close and have too close a look, don't worry you can do it this way. So that's going to be our head. I'm going to wrap some fibre around now to make part of the body. I'm probably going to need some more fibre but I can always add that in a minute. So I'm just going to wrap this around a bit more and I'm going to start stabbing that and I'm going to stab through this part of the head down into the body section and that's just going to help connect the head to the body. We want everything to be nice and secure. And I am pinching this between finger and thumb morning <laughs> as I'm stabbing just so that um, it's got a nice thickness to work against. As I say the closer the fibres are together the um, easier it is to stab them together and the firmer they'll be. <laughs> Sorry my next door neighbour's just at the window. Hello Helen, hello. say hello to the people at home. Hello people at home. <laughs> hello. <laughs> oh wow. 
Sorry, I didn't realise you were... Uh, That's okay, I can edit this out. I could see you were talking to somebody, but I just thought, maybe she's finally snapped. <laughs> well, yeah, it's my, my 44 subscribers. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, now's not a good time to come and give me your raffle tickets then, is it? I shall come and nab you for them later. Yes, okay. I shall see you soon. Ta-ta. Bye. Bye. See, now that's something that doesn't happen when I'm in the garage. So, just get the messy bits out of the book. I don't know what I've done with this fibre but it's got lots of different colours in it. I'll just get rid of some of those. So now I'm just felting in that end there that um, is the end of the fibre I've wrapped. That secures it and now what I can do is work from underneath and stab everything up towards the head section. Now, if this was a proper snowman, the head would be squished down a lot more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my finger on top of the head and at the base there, squish the two together and then felt around the neck area. And what this does is just pushes the head closer to the body. And once you stab all the way around, lots of quite deep, um, close together stabs, what that should do is reinforce that connection there between the neck and head. Now my needle is stabbing kind of sideways in at an angle, probably 45 degree angle, just catching the stabbing in. Um, just because we want to keep that ne neck shape uh, without there being too big a neck. Now so far this has taken what 10 minutes. Um, it's a lot quicker doing it this way but as I say the finish you get isn't quite as good. Okay so I'm just going around the head again just to get the shape back since I've squished it. Plus I want the head to be a little bit smaller so I'm just going to keep going until that shrunk down a bit. Now, if you haven't made um, or watched the video on how to make balls yet, I'll pop that in the description. Definitely have a watch of that because that's going to be quite helpful to get these shapes. Um, you just follow the same technique that I outline in that video. There we go. So this is quite a squat little snowman. I can make him bigger though if I want to. Um, I quite like this, so I'm going to stick with quite a short, dumpy snowman. <laughs> so, there he is there. What we need to do is decorate him. So, for decorating, I've got my scarf and my hat to do. Um, I really want to do the scarf. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do the scarf. Literally, we're just going to do a couple of cuts for the fringing and then we're going to tie it on. So with your scissors, very carefully, we just want to cut some little lines all to the same length. Which I'm failing to do. They're getting shorter. Why are they getting shorter? There we go. A uh, little fringe there. We're going to do that on both ends. If you've got shorter scissors, that would probably be helpful. I'm just going to blame the scissors. There we go. So we've just got our little fringe. And then when we're ready, we're just going to tie it round his neck, if we can, into a little knot. Could probably have done with a longer piece of felt. 
we're just going to pull it really tight there we go now what you can do because it's sticking up like so I'm going to give it a few little stabs now it is acrylic felt but this should work she says there we go just holding it in place a little bit now I think we'll do the hat next again I need something bigger I'm going to go and get some more felt haha <laughs> so we're going to make a bigger one I'm going to cut out a bigger circle because the one I've made just isn't big enough for his big head so I've just taken a piece of felt folded it into quarters and I'm just going to cut a half circle really badly gosh way too big so I'm going to cut this down How's that? That'll do. So we've got our almost circle. I'm going to lay that on top of his head and I've got some black broken tops this is. Um, just what I've got hanging about so I'm going to use some of this. What I'm going to do is roll it into a bit of a ball to get that felting process started. We're going to lay this on top of the circle. Sorry that's going to bother me. Just smooth that out a little bit. She says making it worse. I'm going to lay the ball of fibre on top. This is so fiddly. And we're going to stab around the outside, well inside. What I want to do is leave a rim here, but I want to make a circle inside it. So I'm going to stab through the felt into the top of the snowman's head and keep working my way around, trying to leave the same amount of rim for the hat as I go. And I'm just catching really carefully with my needle. I don't want to put any pressure on the needle at all sideways, otherwise it might bend or break. But I'm just catching these fibres and I'm just felting them in as I go. Now don't worry that the fibre is coming over here because we're going to push it all back into the centre. What we're really doing at the moment is just outlining the shape we want um, and attaching it to the snowman. And what this does as well is this sticks the um, acrylic felt that we're doing in place. So we don't need to glue it on or anything the hat, we're actually felting it into the snowman itself through the acrylic felt. Okay, so we've just done our outline. I'm just going to start felting a little bit higher up now and working my way around. Again, felting down and through the acrylic felt into the top of the snowman. And again, this is quite a messy way to felt, but it's quick. And I have had comments from people saying that there's too much felting in my felting videos. Now if you're new to felting I definitely would recommend doing this whole bit, uh, bit here on a felting pad just because I am stabbing through occasionally and um, almost stabbing myself. So if you lay this onto a felting pad you'll find it a lot easier and safer to do. I'm not doing that though. Now 
Now you can see it's starting to take shape. It is coming out a bit more than we want. So I'm going to use that 45 degree angle again and just stab up towards the top just in lines, just bringing this fibre in and up because we don't mind getting a bit of extra height, we just don't want it quite so wide. And all this time I'm keeping my finger at the top and what that's doing is stopping the fibres from moving up too much and keeping the fibres nice and close together so it's quicker to felt. And what we want is looking from the side is quite a straight line here at the edge of the the hat. Okay, so we've got our shape there. I'm going to just flatten off this top a little bit and you do that by stabbing at a 90 degree angle. See I'm stabbing straight down and just stab evenly over the whole surface until it is flat. It is bringing things out of the side so I'm just going to go around the top again to bring that in. And then from above again around that edge And it's always best to do this in increments, so you're doing it kind of one side and then the other side and keep repeating until you get a nice sharp edge. Um, again, the main reason for that is just because as you go, um, as you stab one way, the fibre will be pushed the other way. So you just need to keep going backwards and forwards until you get the finish you're after. And at the minute I'm not stabbing that deeply. These are quite gentle stabs really, um, because we're just flattening off and making sure everything's the right shape. We're not kind of um, doing anything too structural. Surface work. Now you can spend a lot longer on this if you wanted to and get a real sort of shape to the hat that you want. I'm happy enough with that for now. It's just to demonstrate really. So we need to sew on the eyes and the buttons and add the nose. So I'm just going to see if the nose is dry yet, if I can find it. It's still a little bit damp but I think it'll be fine. So we've got our nose. What I'm going to do is cut off about to here, a little bit longer than you need. And the reason I'm doing that is because what I'm going to do is just pull apart the end that we're going to attach and make it just a bit fluffier so that we've got something to stab into the snowman. So I'm just going to pull the fibres out a little bit. There we go. We're going to pop it where we want it. And we're going to stab inwards, catching those fibres and stabbing them down and in. And that's because we don't want a big squash of orange all around the side there. We want to get it pushed in so that you can't really see it. So we're going to work around the whole of the outside. And we're going to keep going just until it's a bit more firmly attached. And keep working around. Don't work in any one area for too long because you, what you will find is that the nose will go skew with. Um, we want to keep it as central as we can. See if I just stab there too much it goes that way. But if you stab the other side it should hopefully, there we go, come back. And there we go. Now it has squished his head out a little bit so I'm just going to stab his head just in towards the nose a little bit. Okay, so now we want to add his eyes and buttons. So for that, taking off the finger protectors, I'm going to find my needle and thread. Get rid of some of the mess off the side. Bring in our beads. So, 
we're going to want to attach our needle and thread. Now I'm using black thread because I'm going to use black eyes so it shouldn't show up as much. So what I thought I'd do is I'm going to come in through the top of his head um, through his hat because that's black so the thread even if any little bits stick out aren't going to show. What I'm going to do is just do, I'm going to stab through the hat from the front to the back pull it through so that the ends of the cotton are inside the hat. We're going to do a couple of little stitches, really small, we don't want to see them. There we go, just to secure the thread. Then I'm going to stab down to where I want the first eye to be. So, just about there. Now, if you're going to give this as a gift to somebody who's got children or pets, really secure the eyes. We don't want them coming loose because they can be a choking hazard. So I'm just going to do another couple of stitches, really, really tiny. We want them to be hidden by the beads. I don't know why I'm talking like Spock, but I am. There we go. Pull those nice and tight. Add your bead. Do another little stitch if you want to. Again, just really tiny stitch. I'm going to go through the eye again because I want to make sure it's in the place I want it. So what I'm going to do is just use my thumb to hold it where I want it. Bring my cotton back through and out oh, not there, of the back of the hat where we did our original stitches. And what we're trying to do is keep all of our stitches as small as possible and in the same position. The more that they are in the same position, the easier they are to hide later. So I'm going to give this a little pull just to embed it a little bit and make sure it's in the right place. And then I'm just going to do another couple of little stitches at the back here. Now if you find your stitches are showing, you can always cover them up at the end with a little bit of felting fibre and just felt over the top of them. But I think we should be okay. So I'm going to come down and figure out where I want the other eye. I think that's about right. His nose has gone a bit skew with, but don't worry, we can felt that again to get it in the right place. Again, a couple of little stitches. Try to dig your de needle in a little bit deeper just to catch more of the fibre, just so it's secure. We're going to pop our bead on. Again, use your thumb just to get your bead where you want it. I'm going to go through again. Make sure it's nice and tight. And back up to where we did our original stitches. stitches to secure. We're not going to cut the fibre, uh, sorry, the thread off yet though because we need to do some little buttons. So whilst it's attached we can go from here. So just a little stitch there just to make sure the eyes stay put. Then I'm going to come back down again and I want to come out about here where my thumb is if I can. There we go. You might have to squish him a bit to get it through. Don't worry, he should bounce back. There we go, so we've come out, another little stitch. And that's why we've got extra beads. I'm sure I'll find it eventually. So, we're going to add that one there. I'm going to do three of these because I like threes. I think it looks good to have threes. Unless of course I drop another bead, in which case I'll just do the two. Ooh, I've got to do an extra stitch there, but you can always do some extra stitches. Uh, 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but I'm going to try and go right back to the top of the hat again just to oops, get rid of my thread. Oop, there it is. <laughs> do another couple of stitches to secure and then sew through to the front of the hat again and cut as close to the hat as you can without cutting the fibre to get rid of your thread. Now a few things have come loose whilst I've been doing that so I'm just going to do a couple more stabs of the scarf just to secure and just go over that nose again. What you can do is use some of your spare cream fibre and just add it as a ring around the nose and stab into that just to make sure it's extra secure. Um, but I think this should be okay. His carrot does look like a beak. Oh well. And there you go, that's your quick and easy snowman and he has taken probably about half an hour to make um, once you get used to doing them, you could probably make it even faster. If you wanted to use them to cover the whole tree, you could just bulk make the whole thing, uh, make the bodies first and then decorate them all at the end. Uh, it's up to you how you want to do it, but I think he's quite cute. You can also add a little loop if you've got some leftover thread. You could have sewn a little hanging tag at the top for hanging, or you can give him this like this. He could go in a little diorama, whatever you want to do with him. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, feel free to click on that thumbs up button. That really helps me out. And if you're interested in watching some more of these videos in the future, be sure to click on that subscribe and the bell icon. Am I doing that the right way? Subscribe and bell. That way. <laughs> so that you get to see future videos when they come out. Uh, any comments, please pop them down in the comments section. I love to hear from you guys. And thank you for watching. Bye.